are you your body well kind of right but is there a line where this stops being true how much of yourself can you remove before you stop being you and does the question even make sense your physical existence is cells trillions of them at least ten times more than there are stars in the milky way a cell is a living being a machine made of up to fifty thousand different proteins it has no consciousness no will no purpose it justice but it is still an, an individual together your cells form huge structures for jobs like preparing food gathering resources transporting stuff around scanning the environment and so on if you extract cells from your body and put them in the right environment they will continue to stay alive for a while so your cells can exist without you but you can't exist without them if We take all the cells away. There is no you anymore. Is there a line where a pile of your cells stops being you? For example, if you donate an organ, billions of your cells will continue to live on inside someone else. Does this mean that a part of you became a part of another person? Or is this other body keeping a part of you alive? Or let us imagine an experiment. You and a random person from the street exchange cells, one at a time. Your body gets one of their cells, their body gets one of your cells. At which point would they become you? Would they ever? Or is this just a very slow and gross way to teleport you? Let's make this more complicated. The image of ourselves as a static thing is untenable. Almost all of your cells have toadied during your lifetime. 250 million have died since the beginning of this video alone. Between 1 and 3 million per second. In a 7 year period, most of your cells are replaced at least once. Every time your cell setup changes, you air slightly different than before. So a part of you is dying constantly. 
If you oh, if 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 are lucky enough to become old, you will have cycled through Roly a million billion cells. So what you consider yourself is really just a snapshot. But sometimes cells are broken, and don't want toady, questioning the very nature of the unity of our bodies. We call... We... Cle... 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 Them cancer. They cancel the biological social contract and become basically immortal. Cancer is not an outside invader. It's a part of you that puts its own survival over yours. But you could also argue that a cancer cell becomes another entity inside us. Another... 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 being that just wants to thrive and survive. Can we blame it for that? A chilling cell? Story is that of Henrietta Lacks, a young cancer patient who died in 1951. As that of 
Henry, I feel you Usually, cells only survive for a few days in the lab, making research very hard. Henrietta, cancer cells were immortal. Over the decades, they were multiplied over and over again and oozed for countless research projects, saving countless lives. Henrietta's cells are still alive and overall have been grown to at least 20 tons of biomass. So there are living parts around the world from someone who has been considered dead for decades. How much of Henriette is in these cells? What makes one of your cells you anyway? Maybe the information contained in it you're not. Until recently, it was believed that all the cells in your body had basically the same genetic code. But it turns out this is wrong. Your genome is mobile, changing, over time through mutations and environmental influences. This is especially the case in your brain. According to recent discoveries, a single neuron in an adult brain has more than 1,000 mutations in its genetic code that are not present in the cells surrounding it. But how much you is, your are now really. About eight of the human genome is made up of viruses that once infected our ancestors and merged with us. Mitochondria, power plants of the cell, once were bacteria that merged with the ancestors of your cells. They still have their own da. An average cell has hundreds of them, hundreds of little things that are not really human, but they still kind of fair. It is...
confusing. Let's backtrack a bit. We know that you remade up of trillions of little things, made from more little things that are constantly changing. Together, all those little things are not static but dynamic. Their composition and condition is changing constantly. So we might just be a self-sustaining pattern without clear borders that gain self-awareness at some point and now has the ability to think about itself through time and space but really only exists in this exact very moment. Where did this pattern start? With your conception. When the first human arose when life first began conquering our small planet, or when the elements that make up your body were forged in Ostar. Our human brains evolved to deal with absolutes. The fuzzy borders that make up reality are hard to grasp. Maybe ideas like beginning and end life and death, you and me, are really not absolutes, but ideas belonging to a fluent pattern. A pattern that is that at that a term that hurts the part that the 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 <laughs> Lost in this strange and beautiful universe. The problem of who we are isn't just a question of ourselves, but it's also a question of our minds. Just as our cells can be divided and separated from us, so can our very brains be divided and separated from us while still in the skull. Click. Here to go to me channel and watch the next part. Okay, so now go watch Grace video. If you re not yet subscribed to his channel, you should really change that now.